Hi, Mystery Recapped here. Today, I am going to explain a surreal black comedy dystopian film called The Lobster. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. In the near dystopian future, not being in a relationship is considered a crime. To survive in the world, one should always be with a romantic partner. People must go everywhere with their partners, or else they are punishable by law. All newly single people are brought to a hotel that gives them a chance to find a romantic partner in the course of 45 days. If they are unable to find one, they are turned into an animal of their choice through a modern technique. The opening scene of the movie shows us a woman driving down a road until she reaches a field with small donkeys. She gets out of her car and shoots one of the donkeys until it is dead. The protagonist of the movie is an architect named David. His wife has recently left him for another man, so he has been brought to the hotel to find another partner. David is with his dog, Bob, who used to be his brother, but was transformed for having no romantic partner. To check into the hotel, David signs a paper and is interviewed by a hotel staff member. According to the rules of dating, the couple should have a common defining characteristic. David's defining characteristic is that he is short-sighted, meaning he should look for a partner who is short-sighted as well. David also reveals that he has been with his wife for 11 years, but she left him for another short-sighted man. I guess he didn't see it coming. After that, he is taken to his room and is briefed about the rules of the hotel by the manager and her husband. When the manager asks him what kind of animal he would like to be if he doesn't find a partner, David replies that he wants to be a lobster because they live for over a hundred years and are fertile throughout their life. He also adds that he loves the sea and is quite good at swimming. The manager praises his choice of animal, claiming that most choose to be dogs, which affects the ecosystem and the animal food chain. Before they leave, the hotel's maid cuffs one of David's hands to keep him from pleasuring himself, which is against the hotel's rules. Good thing David's a lefty. The following day at breakfast, he makes friends with two men, one who speaks with a lisp, Robert, and one who walks with a limp, John. They both are searching for girls with the same attributes as themselves. While skimming through the dining area, they notice a woman whose nose always bleeds and a woman who is heartless, but there is no one whose attributes align with theirs. Later, during an assembly, the singles are called up to speak and talk about their unique qualities. John says that he acquired his limp when he visited his mother, who had turned into a wolf. He is here because his wife died some time ago. Similarly, the others share their experiences. Throughout the day, the singles are given opportunities to talk to their potential partners. At a dance party, David asks the nosebleed girl to dance with him, but realizes that they do not have a common attribute. Following that, they are called to go to the woods to hunt the loners. Loners are the people who ran away from the hotel because they didn't want to be turned into animals. Since the police in the city would send them back to the hotel, they form a colony and stay in the woods. The singles are allowed to hunt them by shooting them with tranquilizers. Then, the loners are brought back to the hotel and turned into animals. The number of loners the singles catch will be added to the number of days they have left in the hotel. On the first day, David catches none, meaning that his days are going down more rapidly. The best hunter among the singles is the heartless woman who catches about 10 in a single hunt. The hotel also has weird rules that at night, the maid should arouse the men so they are interested in finding a partner quicker. One day, Robert is found pleasuring himself and as a punishment, his hand is burnt in a toaster. Wow, this is some Dobby the house elf shit. In their next hunt, David sits next to the woman whose characteristic feature is that she likes butter biscuits. She talks to David who shows no interest in her even when she offers sexual favors. While talking, she reveals that she plans to jump out of the window of her room if she doesn't get a partner in time. During a swimming lesson, John, the guy who limps, hits his nose, making it bleed. He then approaches the nosebleed girl, lying that his nose bleeds all the time to match their attributes. At the next evening party, John and the nosebleed girl are pronounced a couple and are shifted to a double room. A few days later, the Butter Biscuits girl jumps out of her window and commits suicide. 
The ruthless girl watches her whimper in pain, but doesn't get up to help her. Now, David only has a week left to find himself a girl, so he approaches the heartless girl, acting like he doesn't care for people's lives either. The woman is looking for someone who has no emotions, like her, so she is attracted to David. They hang out and talk for a while, throughout which David keeps up the act. One day, they are in a hot tub, where the woman fakes her death to see if David cares. However, he stays in his seat and ignores her completely. This makes the woman realize that he is actually like her, and she starts to date him. They are even put together in a double room, and allowed to perform activities reserved for only couples, like playing tennis and sitting at a table for two. They stay as a couple for a few days, but the ruthless girl notices David showing emotions when they get intimate. So, one morning, she kicks his brother's Bob to death to test him. David says that it is no problem at first, but then the woman finds him crying in the bathroom. She drags him through the hallways to take him to the manager for lying, but David knocks her out with a tranquilizer gun before she can. The maid watches him do so and promises to not tell anyone. To take revenge for his brother, David thinks of kicking her in the stomach again and again, but settles to another plan. He and the maid get her to the transformation room and turn her into an animal. Following that, David runs away from the hotel once and for all. In the woods, he meets a group of loners and their leader. One might think he is finally with good people, but the leader is as ruthless as the hotel manager. She punishes the loners for having romantic or sexual relationships with each other. They also inform David that two people's lips were cut off a few days ago because they were flirting. After they explain the rules, he is welcomed to the group. One of the loner girls with black hair and short-sightedness like David looks at him for the first time and is instantly attracted to him. But because of the loner's rule, she only talks to him as a friend. In the evening, when the hotel guests come for the hunt, Robert catches David. David tries to save his life, claiming that Robert is his best friend, but the guy is adamant about catching him because he only has two days left. The black-haired girl hits him from behind and saves David's life. At the same time, we see the maid of the hotel meeting with the lead loner. It turns out that the two meet every time she comes hunting to inform the leader about what is going on at the hotel. The maid is not happy with her husband, but doesn't want to leave him because she will end up in the hotel as a guest. So, she and the leader are planning to attack the hotel and take over it. Once every month, two people from the loner's crew pretend to be a couple and go outside to the city to get food and other supplies. This time, the leader and her partner take the black-haired girl and David. In the mall, a police officer sees David alone and questions him about his partner, demanding a marriage certificate from him. But the dark-haired girl saves him from the man. Some days later, the loners finally get ready to attack the hotel. That night, they sneak inside with the maid's help and hold the manager and her husband hostage. They ask the husband to shoot his wife dead if he wants to save his own life. The guy doesn't care about his wife at all, so he shoots her without hesitating. But it turns out that the gun was unloaded and the purpose of the abduction was to show the couple they do not care about each other and are in a hollow relationship. At the same time, David visits John and the nosebleed girl and reveals to her that he is faking the nosebleed so that they could be together. The loners leave abruptly after proving their point and return back to the woods. That night, the maid joins the loner group. In the course of the next few days, the black-haired girl and David get closer and start liking each other. They even plan to run away from the group so they can be together. The girl writes all of this in her journal, but before they can execute their plan, the leader reads the journal and gets to know about their affair. She is enraged by the betrayal, but doesn't confront them. Instead, some days later, she takes the dark-haired girl to the city, claiming that she will fix her short-sightedness, but instead makes her go blind. After returning to the woods, the dark-haired girl finds out what is going on and tries to kill the leader. In the attempt, she kills the hotel's maid instead. The leader spares her and lets her go to David. At first, she tries to hide the fact that she has gone blind, but then comes clean. She is scared that he will leave her now that they do not have any matching attributes. 
David is unsettled, but decides that he wants to stay with her, and helps her out with her other senses of touch and smell. For the next few days, they try to find other attributes that they might have in common, but are unsuccessful. David doesn't want to let go of her, so he suggests they kill the leader and run away from the woods. They put their plan into action at night. David abducts the leader and throws her into an open grave. A while later, some wild dogs approach her and start devouring her body. Meanwhile, he and the dark-haired girl dress up and run away from the woods. Eventually, they stop at a diner in the city. David has decided to blind himself, so the two have matching qualities. They talk for a while about the decision and ask the waiter for a knife. David gets up and goes to the bathroom to blind himself, but stops midway. The movie ends abruptly, without showing if they ever lived a normal life. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.